Childhood made everything feel like it lingered. The time it took for hot chocolate to cool down was eternal. Christmas Day took weeks. The two-hour drive to my grandparents' house took us to a new world. It's all too fast now. This post is picking up notes around Christmas, and I think it's because this is never more true than Christmas. When you're a kid, an occasion takes up so much of your life that you just live in it. Now, Christmas really is just one day. These six days between Christmas and New Year's is the only time of year you should strive to do absolutely fucking nothing. Make zero progress. Take all the time off. Go on vacation from your vacation. Be the least impressive version of yourself. Transform into a couch. Eugene gets me. Happy liminal space, Miss Couches! In this new year, I want you to be all right. I hope you move out. I hope you have enough money to feel safe. I hope you abandon shame and forgive yourself. I hope you get enough sleep and some good news. I hope you laugh a lot and the heaviness of the world eases a bit. I wish you to be all right. 15 ways to spark a new idea. Revisit an old project. Take inspiration from classic stories and folktales. Follow your interests. Start with genre or a unique combination. Start with a character. Start with a setting. Combine or reinvent some classic tropes. Ask someone to share a story they don't usually tell. Be curious about the people around you. Use something from your past. Focus on a hard to define feeling. Experience something new. Brainstorm with a writing friend. Read outside of your comfort zone. Talk to a stranger about their life. Twist the normal, normalize the magic. Hope you guys make use of these ideas. Guess what? This year is almost over. Been a tough year, right? But we not talking about that right now. I have something for you. Ta-da! This is for making it throughout the year. With all those good things and bad, bad things that have happened, I'm happy that you've made it this far and that you're still with me. Thanks a lot for being strong and for staying strong. Let's carry on. <laughs> I bought a bunch of bananas and I've caught Cleo staring at them every day since. Update. I took the last one, and now she wants to know where her bananas went. How do you know that she doesn't just really love that bowl? Because when we leave the bananas on the table without the bowl, she stares at them with just as much love. She only looks at the empty bowl right after we remove the last banana. Then she's no longer interested. I just think they're neat! Tiny forest for your dash. Wildlife returning to your dash. Look, there's a small river crossing your dash. We're coming up on a mountain range. Meadow, slowly reaching the coast. Into the sky, made it to space. I killed you all. And yet, life remains. The fire died out. We're recovering. Tiny forest for your dash. I'm terrified of bugs, but I'm much less scared of the subset I parse as having jobs. Bees have jobs. Spiders kind of have jobs. Ants definitely have jobs. But millipedes do not seem to have jobs. They have a high ratio of legs to probability of employment. Very scary. Millipedes are the cleanup crew and groundskeepers. They eat fungi, decaying vegetable matter, and occasional carrion, and so help recycle nutrients back into the soil. They are not able to bite humans, that would be centipedes, and are totally harmless and helpful. The extra legs are for extra hugs. Once again, the humble role of custodian is forgotten. The garbage man is important. Stop being funnier than me on my own post is one of my favorite healthy tumblerisms, along with things like, hang on, let me look that up, yeah, this is funny, and explicit tone indicators, positive, like yeah, let's build a world where we playfully format healthy interactions. You made a post, and you want it to be the star, 
but damn, you've really got to hand it to this other person for their really funny addition. So here's the internet equivalent of giving someone a friendly punch on the shoulder while making sure they know they got a good grade in social interaction. God, I love the don't you dare hide this in tags screenshot of those tags. It's this aggressive love and look at the awesome addition this cool stranger made. I love them. We're gonna be okay, by the way. It's okay if you're scared, or tired, or unsure, or one million billion other complicated emotions at once. But I've decided things are going to be okay anyway, and I will hold that belief close to my heart no matter how scared, or tired, or lonely, or depressed, or one million billion other things I am. I will hold on to that, and if you're scared, you can hold on to me. We can carry each other through. It'll be okay in the end. If it's not okay, it's not the end. Sorry for who posting in the year 2019, but the doctor is actually so named because he wrote and successfully defended a dissertation at an accredited university, whereas the master completed a two-year graduate program in his chosen field, which points to the existence of a third, less advanced and less specialized counterpart, The Bachelor. The Bachelor is never seen in the show because he's still living with his parents on Gallifrey, listlessly applying for jobs and stress eating. I thought The Bachelor was being fought over by 12 women in a big house. Galaxy Brain. The Bachelor TV show has featured the same man for every season, but he regenerates like the Doctor. Obsessed with the idea that The Bachelor is ritually killed at the end of every season. <laughs> the thing they don't tell you about working with little kids is it wrecks your vocabulary. You hear a kid phrase something bizarrely in a way only a five-year-old can, and now any time you lose your shit, you're like, it dissed up here. Every time someone tells me to be careful, in my head I repeat what one of my kids said as a small child. I am be carefuling. As a young child, my son said, Racaroni for macaroni. I worked with young children for years. It's amazing how much it changes your vocabulary. Thinking again about how the names Arctic and Antarctica just means bears and no bears. What can be more human than coming to a place you've never been and saying, bears are here, than visiting a similar place and going, hmm, but no bears here. And hilariously, that is not why it is called that. It is the circle of the bears because of Ursa Major and Ursa Minor, and the circle without bears because, you know, opposite part of the sky. We lucked right into that one. So what you're saying is, the stars dictate whether bears do or do not exist in places. Astrology is real, but only for predicting where bears will be. Bears do not travel to places they cannot see their gods. The default way for things to taste is good. We know this because tasty means something tastes good. Conversely, from the words smelly and noisy, we can conclude that the default way for things to smell and sound is bad. Interestingly, there are no corresponding adjectives for the senses of light and touch. The inescapable conclusion is that the most ordinary object possible is invisible and intangible, produces a hideous cacophony, smells terrible, but tastes delicious. And yet this description matches no object or phenomenon known to science or human experience. So what the fuck? This is what ancient Greek philosophy is like. But what about the word touchy? Doesn't that relate to touch? I don't get it. I'm having creation ideas beyond my skill level. Do it anyway. I don't have good supplies. Do it with bad supplies then. I don't have free time. So do it slowly. Find the shortest, most direct route to your creation being realized, and do whatever it takes to get there. Plus, you can revisit ideas as many times as you like, as frequently as you want to, so creating it now with your current skills, supplies, and time available is also not the be-all and end-all of that concept's execution. Do it anyway. Either you'll be pleasantly surprised by the results, or you'll have something for your future self to find and revisit another day, instead of losing the idea to the void. 
Now you see, I've watched enough cartoons to know that this square of the carpet is on a separate animation cell from the background, and therefore something funky will happen if I step on it. You won't catch me making a rookie mistake like that. No, sir. Did you step on it? I forgot it was there and stepped on it, plummeting through the concealed trapdoor into the cellars. Please send help. Help is on its way. By the way, are the bricks all the same color? I can't see anything. It's pitch black down here. All that's visible is my eyes. Just make sure there isn't a second, more dangerous pair of eyes somewhere around yours. You're not drinking? No, I'm in recovery. No, I have a family history of alcoholism. No, I don't like the taste. No, I don't like how it makes me feel. No, I can't with my medication. No, I'm pregnant. No, it's against my religion. No, I'm not in a good headspace right now. No, do you have soda? None of your business. All of these are good and valid, especially that last one on the bottom. No, I just don't want to. You don't need a reason not to drink. No is a complete sentence for this, too. The older you get, the more you will realize that your friends are people who have made mistakes and bad decisions, and even just fucked up and hurt people. And obviously your boundaries with your friends are completely up to you. But you do need to recognize that if you cut off everyone who has done something wrong, you're going to end up with no friends. And you yourself will have also fucked up in your life, and not lived up to those impossible standards either. I found it's much more constructive to learn how to say, Hey, dude, that was massively fucked up of you. Because most people are really willing to say, Yeah, it was. I need to work on it. Or not do it again. Or apologize and make things right. Especially if they are hearing it from you as their friend. Sometimes the kindest thing you can do for another person is to tell them that they've done something wrong, help them fix it, and stay their friend. Because it's what we would want from them if we did something wrong. We passed a sign in Boring that said their sister city is Dull, Scotland. Welcome to Dull, paired with Boring, Oregon, USA. Drive safely. Oh, there's a third, Bland, New South Wales. Welcome to Boring, paired with Dull, Scotland. You are now entering Shire of Bland. Three communities named Boring, Dull, and Bland have teamed up to form the League of Extraordinary Communities. Bland Shire Council, League of Extraordinary Communities. Bland, far from dull and boring. I'm sorry, but I just have to appreciate the wordplay on that last sign. It's brilliant. A room called the Doll Room that's full of dolls is mundane. But a room called the Doll Room that only has one doll in it? That's fresh. If a person shows you their doll room and it's full of dolls, they probably just like dolls, you know? It's normal. It's a hobby. But if they show you their doll room and it only has one doll, something's going on with that one doll. Room called the doll room and there's a mirror and nothing else. The door closes. Ooh. Me. Oh wow, this shop has everything my heart desires. Spooky shopkeeper. Yes, I will warn you, every item comes with a price. Me. Yes, I know how shops work. Spooky shopkeeper. The price may be more than you expect to pay. Me. Yes, I know how US taxes work too. Shopkeeper increasingly exasperated. I'm trying to tell you that I'm evil and offering these wares with no regard for the harm they will do. Me, also increasingly exasperated. I know what capitalism is too, goddammit. This is one of my favorite posts. This feels like a Gravity Falls app. That's because it is, broski. I must warn you, these statues come at a terrible price. $20? I'll just take them when you're not looking. <laughs> 